Hi everybody, it's Trevor Hammond here with Sierra Pacific Mortgage. Happy New Year! Happy 2019! Holy cow! Look, I've been having a ton of conversations over the past really 45 days with my mortgage advisors that I coach here daily in Portland and my coaching clients throughout the country uh, around architecting a great business plan for 2019. And what's compelling me to hit record and share this message with you is there is a big gap that I'm finding. So here's the scoop. If you're a mortgage professional, and again, this could be relatable if you're a real estate agent, a financial advisor, a CPA, anybody in sales really. But if you're a mortgage professional and your goal is, uh, let's say, to help 100 families in 2019, right? Roughly eight a month. My next question is always, all right, where do you want that business to come from? And right there is the first kind of cloud of doubt that I, I can see and, and feel kind of seep in because they haven't really drilled down far enough on their plan. They've, they've set this arbitrary number of how many people they want to help. Maybe it's a volume, a, a numeric goal around volume or, or whatever. But the first step is making sure you get really clear, where do you want that, that business to come from? If you want 100 families, uh, you've got to know how many from each pillar of business. So for example, in talking with some uh, mortgage professionals recently, they might say, you know, I want, um, I want half of my business to come from real estate partners. All right, great, right? So 50 out of 100 we want from real estate partners. What else? Uh, and they might say, you know, I want, um, I'd love 25% to come from my database of, of all my clients that I've already helped in the past and continue to serve, whether it's them coming back to me for business or them referring friends and family and coworkers to come work with me and my team. Great, write that down, 25%. Got 25% left, where do you want that to come from? And they might say, you know what, financial professionals, CPAs, financial planners, estate attorneys, you name it, insurance agents, great. Now, we've, now we're making some headway, right? Now we're getting some specific details. We want 50% of our business or 50 uh, closed loans to come from real estate partnerships. 25 of our 100 to come from financial professionals and 25 from our database, our book of business of all those people we've already helped that know us, like us, trust us. Here is where the gap lies. Are your activities, your prospecting activities in alignment with what you just wrote down or told me? And oftentimes it's not. So imagine you work a 40 hour week. There's a lot of things that go into that 40 hour week, but let's assume 20 of that should be prospecting, right? Proactively prospecting for new business. So 20 hours a week prospecting, right? Proactive phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings, sitting down with people who need your services, your advice, your help. If you want half of your business to come from real estate partnerships, then 10 of those 20 hours, in theory, should be going to real estate development, real estate agent development in those partnerships. 25% of that 20 hours, or basically five, should go towards cultivating your database, staying in front of all your past clients that you've helped, and getting them to have either peace of mind or refer other people to you when you do reviews with them, whatever the details are. And 25% should be from uh, spent on developing and cultivating relationships with those financial professionals that you said you want. Now here's the reality. I go through this with folks, and then they look at their calendar and all their goals, and they'll have 90% of their prospecting activities designated to being in front of real estate professionals. And there's nothing wrong with that, other than the fact that that's totally out of line with where you said you want your business to come from. And then they'll realize that they've only really got about 10% of their prospect and activities designated for their clients that they've helped in the past to generate more business from that, that those folks that already know you, like you, trust you. And another 10% maybe to financial planners and CPAs, insurance agents, and state attorneys. It's completely out of whack. And then you get halfway through the year to the end of 2019 and you wonder why you're still getting most of your business from real estate agents, which is, again, nothing wrong with that. That's your goal, but it's not a well-diversified business. So that was the gap I wanted to share with you. Get clear on where you want your business to come from. Make sure you got your goal. But second, where do you want that business to come from in a, from a percentage standpoint? And then 
are your prospect and activities in alignment with that? That is so important. All right, if you have any questions, please reach out. Again, I, as you can tell, I spend my days, my weeks spending time with mortgage professionals, helping them dial this in and get clear and confident and excited, actually, about their business plan and then their daily, weekly activities to get there. Take care. Happy New Year. It's going to be an amazing year. I know it. I hope you know it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.